Hey viewers, Sketchy Reporter here. Um, sorry if I sound a little off. I have one of the worst headaches of my life right now. <laughs> and, uh, it's, 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 it's been a tiring night. Um, I was catching up with some old friends and whatnot, but, I mean, let me just get down to the chase of this. Um, I went to go see The Raven today. Um, and my thoughts beforehand, I, I like the idea of the story. A guy is killing people off based off Edgar Allan Poe's stories, and I thought it had a very, um, Seven-ish feel to it. Movie with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Um, and... The Raven... The story... Um, it's a mystery movie. It's a mystery movie. The story is actually good. Um, I really like the story a lot. Except for the ending. And for a mystery movie, that's not a good sign. Um, I'm, I'm gonna spoil the crap out of this movie, so just be warned. But, um, let me just, let me just start from the, the top. John Cusack as Edgar Allan Poe. This could very well be the worst performance ever by John Cusack. And I watched 2012, so, um, that, that's saying something. Uh, the, his... I, I don't know if this is just direct, a directing choice or an acting choice, but this character was so over the top. Every single line was done with such aggression and like, craziness and simply stupidity. And whenever I think Edgar Allan Poe, I do not think, you know, crazy, psychotic in that sense. I think psychotic as, like, he's mentally damaged, he's very quiet, very, you know... He, he, he keeps to himself. This Edgar Allan Poe is all over the map. <laughs> he, um, he chews every bit of scenery. Sorry about the cat. He chews every bit of scenery that he gets. And it's actually a pretty poor performance. Uh, and that doesn't just go for him. That goes for nearly everybody in the movie. The acting in this film is no. It's, it's just no. Um, there, there is no acting. There is only really, really drastic talking. It's it's pretty bad. Except for, um, I do not know the actor's name, but whoever played Inspector Fields, I think is his name, he's actually a really good actor. I, I really liked every scene that he was in. He did a fantastic job. Uh, and he's kind of the one that follows, he's, he's the Watson to Edgar Allan Poe's Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and he's actually a really, really fun character. Um, he's just trying to... He, he, the, the plot of the movie. Uh, I guess this is where I kind of get into this. Um, there's a guy killing people based off Edgar Allan Poe. He, there's a guy going on a killing spree, basically. And they find out that all these murders are very similar to the, the writing style and stories of Edgar Allan Poe. So they approach Edgar Allan Poe, wondering if he's the one that's doing all the killing. And um, he's obviously not. So... They go on this wild chase trying to find him, the, the killer, uh, him and Inspector Fields. And uh, honestly, that, that's a pretty good setup for a story. Uh, but um, I will, I will, I'll go, I will get the movie list. It's one of the more convincing love stories I've ever seen. Um, and that's, that's kind of sad considering this one was pretty two-dimensional. But you really did feel that... Um, Edgar Allan Poe really had feelings for, I think her name was Emily Hamilton, I think was her name. Yeah, you really, you really felt it. Uh, and I, the direction there was probably some of the better. Um, and this movie actually used practical effects, uh, for the most part. There, there was a lot of, um, CGI here and there. A lot of things that actually came at the screen. I don't recall, I saw this movie in 2D. I don't recall this movie being advertised for 3D. It probably was. Everything nowadays is. But, um... What really, really aggravated me was a couple things. Uh, besides the acting being completely terrible for the most part. Um, the characters. Edgar Allan Poe is a douchebag. And that's not a good thing. I mean, yeah, he's supposed to be kind of closed and, and aggressive. I, now I'm giving them the compliments. No... Um, this is not, when you think Edgar Allan Poe, this is not who you think. Uh, starting bar fights, um, like, yelling at 
very, very people, very, very powerful people in charge of like kingdoms. That's not how I see Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, he gets into this fight with the inspector, and it just—it's really forced for one. But it just doesn't feel natural. The dialogue just doesn't feel. It feels really, really scripted. Um, despite what we've all obviously seen Hollywood can do with like Josh Whedon to work and stuff like that, it feels heavily scripted, in like a Shakespearean way. And it's not. It doesn't get. The, it doesn't really get the movie justice at all. Um, but there's scenes where, like, the father of Emily Hamilton absolutely hates Edgar Allan Poe because he wants to marry her, and he doesn't want her falling in love with a writer, and he, like, hates this guy. He slaps him, he punches him, he throws him on the ground, and then you get a scene change, and then they're kind of like best friends. And I guess you're supposed to assume that the daughter has gone miss. The daughter has been kidnapped by this killer, and I guess we're supposed to just assume that they put their differences aside off screen. You really needed that extra scene I felt to make them, you know, compatible. Not just I hate your guts. Uh, okay, my daughter's gone. We have to work together. It was it was really really fast and it just jarring. Which jarringness? Um, this movie is beautifully shot. The action is beautifully shot. The movie itself is really, really well framed. Except for the editing. Um, it's not bad editing, really, but it is very jarring. In the sense that you change locations a lot in this film for reasons that don't really need changing. Um, you just kind of... The camera shape shifts a lot, it feels like. And for moderately simple scenes where it probably would have been easier just to pan the camera. Um, it's, that's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really big nitpick, I know, but it it gets to you after a while. It's a, yeah, it's a nitpick, I admit. But that's kind of what I do. <laughs> um, there's also scenes where they take a, they, they take this jump to, um, you know, the story, um, what's it called? The Telltale Heart. Uh, where the killer has... Emily Hamilton nailed underneath his floorboards. And there's a scene where she manages to escape to immediately be caught again and put back underground. Uh, this problem is a pro this, this movie is a, this, that scene's a problem with me because of the killer. Um, like I said, I'm already spoiling this movie like crazy, but this, this, this comes the big, the big spoil. It's a murder mystery, but the character that is on screen for no more than two minutes is the killer. And when you think about the entire movie as a whole, none of the previous clues add up to this guy at all. At all. And the guy, like, the, the character's very first line in the movie is, are you surprised? And everyone in the theaters is kind of like, yeah? Uh, I thought it was gonna be Mr. Gibbs from Pirates of the Caribbean that was the killer. <laughs> I mean, that's what, it's, that's what I felt like it was... Like, I don't know the actor's name. Mr. Gibbs from Pirate of the Caribbean is in this movie. Um, but I, the clues were adding up to him. And then it looks like he's getting ready to bust him, and then he's dead to reveal this Reynolds guy. There's no justice for what he's doing. He's just kind of doing it because he wants to be as memorable as Poe kind of a shaky reason to become a mass murderer, wouldn't you think? Maybe I'm not making a lot of sense, but it just... This movie... I think what gets me the most is that it has an awesome plot. This movie could have been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it just kind of did everything in reverse. Edgar Allan Poe's not who you would think Edgar Allan Poe would be, and I don't mean that in a good way. Uh, it's not like a twist where Edgar Allan Poe is just like this. He, he's not. He's something more than what you think. He's just nothing like what you'd think, and that's might not sound like a difference to some people, but it is. It's a. It's a difference. Uh, the love story, while good, is quite choppy. The characters are poorly constructed with very poor writing. Um, and okay, the movie is called The Raven. And it's not like they didn't show a raven in this movie. <laughs> oh no. They showed way too much of the raven. It was just constant, 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 just raven imagery. 
symbol symbolism, I guess? But after the 18th time of seeing a raven, you're like, yes, I get it. It's called the raven. It's an Edgar Allan Poe story. You can get rid of the raven. Uh, another nitpick, I know, but there's there's too much raven in the raven. <laughs> uh, what else can I what else can I complain about? Uh, there was just so much. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying the movie was bad, really. I'm not saying that really at all. I think the problem is it's way too mediocre. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the company either. Maybe this was their first big piece. I don't know, but. It, it feels very rushed and meteor meteor ochre-ish. That's a word. Uh, just because there were so many scenes that were actually pretty well done, and then it just suddenly cuts to stuff that it doesn't. It never really matters. Like there's this whole plot point where um, the ink that Edgar Allan Poe uses in, in his um, literature is magnetic, and for some reason, like your hair is magnetic with this ink. And that's just kind of a plot point that is completely dropped. If it comes back, if, if you've seen the movie out there, and that actually is like a big plot point that I'm completely just forgetting about, let me know, because I don't think it was. Maybe I just forgot about it. And you know what? That's one of the big other problems with this movie. This is a very forgetful film. I am actually lucky to know what I... I I'm lucky to remember what I saw at all. Um, it just... It, it is a pretty rocky, shaky film. And not, not shaky cam, I don't mean it like that. It's just, there's actually no shaky cam in this movie. The uh, action scenes were actually pretty well done. There's this scene that's based off the pit and the pendulum, if you're an Edgar Allan Poe fan. And the pendulum's coming down, about to swing into this guy's chest. And you see it, you see the whole, you see the whole thing. It's a rated R film, and I actually didn't think that. But it's actually a pretty good effect, and I'm almost positive it's a practical effect too, except for the... 3D part of it, where the blood kind of splatters onto the screen. But, uh, it's... This, the, the effects, for the most part, are pretty good. And, um... It's just the villain doesn't make any sense. And for a murder mystery, that's a problem. That's a pretty big problem. Uh, maybe to other people it did. I guess you kind of have to be a fan of Edgar Allan Poe's work to like the movie. Uh, and again, I've said in other commentaries... Not commentaries, other reviews I've done, that it, it helps... Some movies are just made for people who have read the stories. Um, that, that's fine, I guess. I mean, it's, some movies aren't for everybody. I apologize for the crackling sound. The fish tank is going crazy. Uh, some movies aren't just aren't for everybody. Um, and I guess this is just one that wasn't for me. And that's kind of sad too. Cause I am a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe. He was a, a writing idol of mine, probably in freshman year of high school. Uh, I had this big book, I gave it to a friend now, but I had this big book about all the stories of Edgar Allan Poe, and I used to read that all the time. Uh, so as a fiction, as a historical fiction, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's another time piece, really. It's a historical fiction movie that takes place in that time period. It, it actually does stay pretty accurate to the historical, you know, um, Edgar Allan Poe's history, besides the fictitious murdering stuff, which is, you know, most of the movie. But it is pretty true to um, his lifestyle, how he died. Uh, they kind of just make a... The, the story is, like, the very first thing you see in this movie is a black screen with the white words that say, uh, Edgar Allan Poe was found dead on so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and no one knows the cause of his murder. Or uh, cause of his death. And uh, the movie just kind of happens. Uh, it, it shows how he dies in the movie. And I'm going to tell you how. He, he apparently dies from poison plus heartbreak. And I say plus heartbreak, because the poison is not, there's no continuity with this poison. He drinks it, he feels really, really weak, he collapses on the floor, he gets up, he's fine for like five minutes, reading, reading manuscripts and doing stuff, collapses again, he's fine, he gets back up, he starts reading, drinking st more stuff, he goes into the hospital, he dies. It's, the continuity of the poison doesn't make a lot of sense, I guess they had to do it to keep things interesting. Uh, which is the final final thing I'm going to talk about. The atmosphere of this movie and the um, suspense in this film. Uh, granted, it's pretty well done. Uh, there were a couple moments where I was, I was on the edge of my seat, really curious where the story was going to go. Uh, it never went where I wanted it to go, but that's just from, you know, what I want besides what they did. Which is a big problem I have with movies. Just, oh, that could have been so cool had they done this idea. But I, I'm not a director of those films, so 
What do I know? Would I say skip it? No. But I would say be prepared for a movie that isn't what you expect. Uh, I wouldn't say skip it. Um, I'd say rent it. Um, buying it or seeing it in theater may be a little too much. Just because it's one of those movies where it's a, it's a mystery movie. Mystery movies are not really major for replayability. I mean, any movie really, you know, but just mystery movies, they spend so much time talking about the ending. I, I'm making sense in my head, but it's not coming out right. But you, some of you guys might know what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, I say rent it. It's not a terrible movie. It's not a bad movie. Uh, critics have given this movie a really hard time, and I completely understand their points. Uh, and, and I also understand the fans' point of Edgar Allan Poe. It's not a happy middle. It's more toward the critics' side than it is the fans' side. It's not... My scale, I'm going to give it a 5. Uh, like a 5 or a 6. Considering I gave the Hunger Games a 4, which I'm dropping more and more in my head. Um, it's, it's better than the Hunger Games, in my opinion. Because the action, you can actually see... But yeah, I, I'm, I'm repeating myself a lot now, but if you want to, go watch The Raven. If you're a fan of, like, writing stories, if you're a fan of mystery, if you're a fan of, like, old-time, oldie-time, like, like, that timepiece, that's The Raven. Uh, not much of a uh, review, really, but for one, I'm, I feel terrible right now. And two, it just didn't leave an impact. Uh... It left more of an impact than Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. <laughs> Manicot actually understood what was happening in The Raven, for the most part, till the ending. But, I've talked for way too long, and, um, that's The Raven. Uh, check it out if you're a fan of him or mystery movies. I can't really recommend it to anybody else. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you got something out of it. See ya.